two writers, one just starting out, the other a bestseller. Join James Blatch and Mark Dawson and their amazing guests as they discuss how you can make a living telling stories. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Hello and welcome to the Self-Publishing Formula podcast with Mark Dawson and James Blatch on a grey Friday. We're not actually recording this on the Friday it's going out, but I'm guessing it's grey because we're in the UK and uh, that's how it rolls here. Uh, and uh, things settled down in Salisbury, Mark, because we've been recording for the last few minutes and I keep hearing sirens in the background. I'm assuming nothing else has kicked off. Nothing new, um, but I know that they're talking about... Um those who, who haven't been keeping up with my exciting life, um, the the, uh, the two, the Salisbury ex-Soviet spy, which sounds pretty weird to say, <laughs> who is poisoned literally 30 seconds from where I am right now, um, and is still in the hospital. As we record this, he's still alive, as far as we know. Um, mm. And and yeah, they're, they're still decontaminating Salisbury um, city centre. So there's quite a lot of it that's still cordoned off, a pub and a restaurant. Um the Sainsbury's car park is, is all is it, there's, there's every now and again, you'll, you'll see on the news, um, uh, officers in and hazmat suits tromping around, um, very, I know very, very well playground that I've taken my kids to it is, it's all, yeah, it's all very weird. And, yeah. and, um, I was talking to a few local businessmen and, um, how business is down, you know, footfall is, is down. So it's, it has had an effect, you know. It's um, it's pretty weird. Given I'm completely blasé about it, I don't think there's any risk whatsoever. Well, it's, it's strange that that dropping nerve agent to the middle of a town would have an effect on it. But um, oh, well, yeah, exactly. No, it's new. It's weird, but um, no, it's um, yeah. Life life goes on. Um, nothing and changes the, in my little office, that's for sure. There's been some um, good conspiracy theories going around. In fact, somebody posted in in one of our Facebook groups that um, uh, it, come on. Boys, he said, "There's it's no surprise it's happened there, right next to um, the UK's mm. Porton Down. Yeah, and Porton Down is is the UK's uh, C, uh, NCBC centre. Um, I've been there actually in the past, done a BBC course on how to survive nerve agents, and it features in my novel, would you believe? Um, but it's a bit of a conspiracy theory to say that the British have developed this nerve agent and then gone to the nearest possible town and dropped it on <laughs> somebody who the Russians happened to want dead. Um, but it's, of course, mm. funny enough, when the Russians finally started speaking about it, what was the first thing they hinted at? Basically said, maybe it came from Porton Down. Yes, so. I think that's known as a, that's known as a false flag. Um, and right, and yeah. thriller writers like me have been writing about false flags for ages. So yeah, it's um, yeah, it's it's I can't really see that. I suppose it's possible, but to say it is extremely unlikely would be underestimating. It also happened just before Putin's election, and uh, uh, that happens every time he gets elected. He saber rattles and looks macho and strikes a blow for Russia, and it seems to get him re-elected. Right. Anyway, it's a fascinating I mean, reason we talk about it. It's not just a random bit of news, but it's um, this is the stuff of a lot of people's novels, and it's not too far away from the stuff that you write about. Oh, no, um, very similar. So uh, it's it's fascinating that's happened on your doorstep. Okay, so we're going to talk about um, uh, websites this week, uh, Mark Dawson. So uh, we have uh, touched on this subject in the past. Obviously, it's it's the subject of uh, a, a lot of thought that goes into most authors' platforms. Uh, we talk a lot about landing pages, very sp- precise types of websites that have a single purpose. But authors also need a web presence, a shop window. And uh, people will search for you once they um, start getting interested in you. You had a pretty good website for a long time, but then you decided to go to a new company. And that's the guy who we're going to interview today. You've had your website now probably 18 months, something like that. I think your new one. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. So people can look at that, markjdawson.com. And you being uh, a man who used to um, hang around in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame type of people, having fights with... um, with uh, rock stars in LA restaurants and that sort of thing. So so you've gone with this guy who um, actually has built his career making websites for the rock and pop industry. So people like Katy Perry, um, much to my amazement, Pink Floyd and David Gilmour, he works with, so I'm big fans of them. Uh, I don't know if that's what drew you to him, but it's it's all about aesthetics for him, uh, as it should be with a modern website. Yeah, I was looking around. I wanted to change it. Been, I'd had the same website for four years or so, and it is the one that we use in the 101 course. And the reason for that is because it's bloody effective. It, it worked really well. It does exactly what it was meant to do, and it wasn't expensive to um, to replicate it. So yeah, we were able to um, show students how, what they should be taking from that. But um, 
I suppose one of the one of the uh, kind of the side effects of selling courses quite successfully is suddenly um, everyone copies your website, which is fine because it's, it's kind of what I told everyone to do. So um, I certainly don't mind that. But I decided that it was it was time anyway for an update. Um, so I started looking around. And I saw um, the Robert Galbraith website, which was J.K. Rowling's website. And I looked at it, um, and I liked it quite a lot. It was very design-focused. And having a great designer like Stuart on, on the team, I knew that I could make it look nice, or Stuart could. Um, so I, um, I looked into the company that uh, had designed it, and they're called um, Creative Corporation. And then I looked, to my surprise, and found that they designed the website for Nine Inch Nails, which is probably my favorite band. Um, Pink Floyd, Beatles have done some for, Oasis, Katy Perry, um, tons and tons of stuff. Um, really, not, not kind of like two-bit bands, but like some of the biggest artists in the world. So I, I dropped um, them a line and said, like, oh, hello, um, I'm, uh, you never have heard of me before, but I'm, I'm a self-published author looking for a new website. How much would it cost for you to do one for me you know, or to start scraping out ideas. And he came back with, I'll be honest, it is, it, Dave's not cheap. Um, he, but he's, he's brilliant. Um, so he, he's not, uh, he, he, he's not overly expensive. I think you get great. No, it's not, money. not over, not massively expensive, but yeah, not the cheapest option. That's for it, sure. It wouldn't be something that I would recommend for anybody. Uh, you know, I'm selling enough books to make this, uh, obviously it's a write off as well, but yeah, I can, um, I can justify this. Um, and we, we started chatting and, and I thought, yeah, let's do it. So Dave then um, over the course of a month or so started to, to redesign my site for me. And it has been a very pleasurable experience. He's extremely professional. He's he's really good. He's got a great team as well. So he also hosts for me now as well. And um, it's gone down really well with my fans. I've got lots of kind of bells and whistles like Spotify playlists that we've embedded into each book. So kind of the the... the the music that I'm listening to whilst I wrote a particular book, readers can check that out. Um, there's there's a lot of, of functionality, but at the same time, it is very pretty. It's design focused. It's not. It works on all platforms. Everything I wanted, he basically did for me. So um, I thought it would be really good. We haven't really touched on websites specifically or kind of best practice. So I thought it'd be really good to get him on um, and to bring a very professional, uh, creative website design perspective to to the podcast. Yeah, and it's a, it's, it's a very modern company. I think everyone works from home, which is why this interview takes place on what appears to be the boiler room of Dave Stansby's house. But that's, you know, it's the modern way and um, it's how we operate as well. So let's hear from, um, from Dave and then uh, Mark and I'll have a chat off the back. So, David Stansby, welcome to the Self Publishing Formula podcast. I mean, it's unusual, a little bit unusual for us. You're not an author. Normally, we're talking to authors, one, even if they've got a product or a website or a service, they've started as an author. Uh, but I think I'm right in saying you're not an author, but you come at this from a slightly different angle, don't you? Yeah, I, um, yeah I'm not an author. Um, I'd like to be, but I'm not good, at, good enough at uh, coming up with creative writing. I'm good at coming up with uh, creative images and campaigns and websites. Yeah, and if people want to have a look at what we're going to be talking about today, if you go to uh, thecreativecorporation.com, you will see some very, very smart, very striking imagery, very smart imagery. And David, you better set this up a little bit because uh, I have to say, you had me at David Gilmore when I read through the people who you work with, because I'm a huge Floyd fan. But um, wow, I mean, you've got a, a, a guest list to be envious of, the people you have worked with. So just tell us how you got from where you were to where you are now. Um, yeah, quite quite lucky, really. Um, I moved down to, so I've been a graphic designer for 28 years. Um, I started just before computers. So I learned the old craft of graphic design. Um, I set up a business in 1990, um, and I've been freelance ever since, actually. So I moved down to London, managed to move in with a girl that worked for Robbie Williams, and she said, look, uh, our studio is looking for somebody to design a book. Um, this was about 2005, designed a book, and before you know it, every record label was calling me to say, would you like to... You know, would you like to work on digital campaigns for us, websites? Yeah, it's, I was kind of in the right place at the right time. Yeah, right place, right time, exactly right. In exactly the same way that Pete Best was in the wrong place at the wrong time. It just, yeah. in rock and roll, sometimes it works for some and not for others. 
And who was it? Uh, Dire Straits, um, Mark Knopfler's brother, who I think <laughs> left the band just before they made it big. But you, you are the guy who just said, yeah, I can do that. And now you've got uh, Yoko Ono, I think, Casey Perry. I mean, they, we could name drop quite a lot, can't we, for the people you're working with now? Yeah. We, I mean, we're we're very we're a very different type of company. We we're a very modern business because we all work remotely. We're a big network across Europe. You know, filmmakers, designers, uh, project managers, SEO specialists, and we all kind of collaborate on projects together. You know, so so one of the things I'm interested in because I mean, the thing about website building is that website building sort of came about. You know, all of this stuff has come about over sort of 15, 20 years, um, and we can we can go from zero to, to where we are now quite quickly in this industry. But you do get two different types. You get people who can build a website. They say, what do you want, mate? And they can build it. And then you get people who are designers first and actually building the website. So it's kind of a small part of it. And it's very clear to me that you are designers. That's what you bring to the table here. Yeah. Uh, kind of split it into to three actually and strangely enough i've just been talking to an author um that's uh, that approached me because of mark's website that we we built um i just said the same it's kind of there's three things really you've got your planning you know what do you want to do how's it integrate into your business um that then moves on to your creative you know how do you want to look and feel um how we how we're going to present your work uh and then obviously we've got the the development side so you know Put it, building the website and then making sure it's easy for that person to maintain. So yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's it's a it's it needs to be properly planned basically. But yes, yeah, creative. Yes, you will. I, I, and that's very obvious. And um, people can also have a look at markjdawson.com, of course, as being a, another example of your work. Um, and that's really why we're talking to you because I think um, for authors you know, every little edge that they can find somewhere in an increasingly competitive market is going to uh, be important for them and how they you present yourselves, your shop yeah. window, um, obviously is crucial. Mark's, you know, is a, is a fussy guy about that. It's very important to him that his brand and his image is absolutely right. And so you would have, how would you have started that conversation with it? Would it have been a functionality discussion or would it have been a brand discussion? Uh, a little bit of both, actually. Um, so obviously, first of all, Mark had a very strong idea about what his objectives were. He's obviously had some form of various different websites in the past. Um, so it's really sort of sitting down and, and agreeing what his objectives were for the website, what he wanted to do over the next 10 years, and what framework we need to have in order to achieve that. Um, I then also noticed that he had a very creative designer that had produced all the book sleeves. Um, so we decided that we would work with the designer to kind of bring some extra elements, which aren't just the book cover, into this different series to to really give a bit of a cinematic feel for each of the each of the different books and the series. You know, something which you don't really see. Um, it's, fair, it's a fairly kind of new thing. Yeah, yeah, it is. and uh, But I don't think... I think you, you'll be turning some heads around the place because um, people do want to move beyond uh, the kind of routine. And there are a lot of routine websites. But I suppose that does also beg the question what the website is for. And that's that can be quite a difficult question for some authors to answer. They understand the point of having a landing page that you drive people to and, and have a very specific purpose. That's almost a minimalist design. Um, is it important in your view to have this kind of front, the shop window for yourself as well? Uh, yes. I mean, it, it, it all depends. It's a bit like a music artist, really. Authors are, are very sort of similar in, in that way. You might get somebody that was set, would like to have a regular blog and have that as the focus of their front page. You might get somebody that's going to produce a lot of different video material to support the book and they want to showcase that. Or you might have many, many different products and that's the most important thing. So it's really what what the objective is. I mean, with you know, with obviously Mark and rightly so, it was um, you know creating the fan base, so developing the fan base and rewarding those fans, you know, with some of the first few books, you know, um, downloaded for free. So it's making sure you've got the right objective. 
And do you find now with um, with artists, obviously it's a lot of music artists who you work with, are they creating websites for specific campaigns for a period of time uh, rather yeah. than my website for a bit? Because I notice I mean, Pink Floyd every now and again will do a new box set at Discovery, I think perhaps was the last one. And the whole website is all geared around that. So there's a fairly, there's a shelf life to some of the projects you work with. Good question. Very good question. Um, yeah, it, sometimes the budget, sometimes like with Pink Floyd, that they will pay to have a, you know, kind of shop window to that particular product on the Pink Floyd website. Um, that's, it's usually just a quick fix for a short amount of time just to promote that product. But a well-designed website will have that type of promotion already thought about and quite easy to adapt. You know, there's a lot of websites now where you get a splash page at the front of a website. That just means the website has been designed badly. If you need to stick a, put a, you know, a, a kind of fix the front page, you haven't really thought about what you're doing properly. Um, so, yeah, it's a, that's, that, that's a, good, it's a good question. And is your idea, your aim that the artists themselves will, will, once this is handed over, this is something they can do? Uh, yeah, exactly. So we build all of our web, websites on WordPress. Um, they've got what's good about the sort of, you know, modules for each element. So it might be a blog, a news page, you know, the books, um, you know, and each of those you can just literally log in and you can drag and drop the order of things on the page so you can move your books around um, and then edit the contents and the images. It's very simple, very simple nowadays. And you're, you're the head honcho. This is your company, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you've got this team of people. I mean, do you, em, you employ people or you have people freelance around the world for you? How does, how does it work? Uh, we, we, we took, so we're like a network, really. We're a network over the last 28 years, just like many other people in different industries, you know, even authors, you've got this large network of people you've developed. Um, we've got designers in, you know, Barcelona, Scotland, Wales, developers in Poland, in Bristol. And basically we all, we all work from home. Um, we do meet every now and then and we just work. We've got flexible working hours. Uh, you know, we, we collaborate and we put a team together based on each project. So it's a really nice way of working, really, and making sure you've, you know, you've got your life as well. Yeah, that does sound good. It's not, not too dissimilar to the way SPF works, except um, I, I haven't worked out how to get the life bit yet, but uh, it seems to be <laughs> too much. Right. So you're very familiar with the type of productivity tools that we use every day, the slacks and that sort of thing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, which exactly. which does make this this working arrangement um, work, uh, yeah, basically. To be honest, I think it's the future. It, it has yeah. to be the future. It yeah. has to be. Yes, I think so. And I think uh, the people who are uh, still on the on the commute into New York or London, wherever it is, every day will um, be sitting there counting the days till it's the future for them as well. And really, there's it's it is becoming for some companies a very old fashioned idea that you've got to have the rows of people sat in front of you. When what you really want is the work done, and it doesn't really matter to you too much what time people get up, what time they go to bed, and how they do it. And yeah. I guess that's probably how you work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So you built up this industry and. Um, I can see, like, as I say, quite quite a few big names on here. People will probably get the impression this is very high end. Is this a very high end option for authors, or is this accessible for some authors who are starting out? Um, yes, yeah, of course it is. Um, I think with um, I've been thinking about this recently because people will be familiar with uh, templates which are out there, and literally, you know, I had that conversation earlier. Temp and as you said, templates only go so far. And they don't really have the, some of the really essential details because that's something which, you know, you do when you create a bespoke website. So somebody setting out, I think a template would, would be fine. And for most people, it is just to get yourself established and maybe familiar with, uh, you know, um, uh, sort of how websites work. But then as soon as you start to take off, it's good to invest just a little bit more and craft everything around exactly what you want. And that's when people come tend to come to us. 
they'll say typical thing is I've had a website for four or five years. Um, I'd now like to do something and I've got a very good idea about what I'd like to do. And that's where we come into it. Yeah. Okay. So sort of realizing their, their vision and, uh, yeah. and I guess some people are fussier than others. Have a, I'm not fussy is the wrong word, but they have a, a more specific idea in mind than others. Do you prefer that? Or are you happy if someone comes along and says, look, this is my business. What do you suggest? Yeah. Either way, either way, you know, it's, uh, and people are very different. You yeah. know, so that's, you just have to, you have to work around with, you know, what, what, what the objective is, but no, we're just to go back on that point about, you know, are we, uh, we're not, we're not an expensive agency. Um, you know, it's, uh, you've got your very large global digital ad, you know, advertising agencies and digital companies that charge thousands per day. We're, we're no, we, we sit somewhere in the, in the middle. Yeah. I think the problem is when people see Katy Perry and Nine Inch Nails, they might think, "Can I? Am I using the same person who does those websites? Can I afford M- that?" Music is one of the tightest budgets <laughs> in any industry. Well, of course, they, they've they've they had a real drop of revenue, haven't they, since the whole digital yeah. revolution? So, yeah. So it's yeah, it's, it's not what it, the perception is that, but that's not the truth. Yeah. 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 Well, your job is to make it look very rich industry and make it, make it look incredibly glamorous. And you've done that um, w- yeah. with these websites here. Um, so I'm interested in the fact that you hand over the websites. I mean, I mean just think from a business point of view, is there a, a recurring income for you? You don't do the hosting or the sort of maintenance. You, you try and keep a contract going with people or do you do the design work, allow people to host it wherever they want and then say goodbye or... Yeah, again, whatever the, pre- the preference is, Mark asked us to host, which we do. We host Nine Inch Nails, uh, the Sound Garden website. Um, but we're just as happy to put it onto, you know, a hosting company. And there are many fantastic hosting companies in the world today that don't cost very much at all. You know, there's, there's even website, you know, companies that uh, one of my friends said he registered the domain name, built a website and hosted it for one ninety nine. Yeah. Think, not even per month one fee 199 that's ridiculous isn't it yeah, yeah. that's not bad <laughs> yeah that's not bad at all but the reason i ask that is because um i think that there there are people falling into different camps here but there are quite a few particularly in the author community of people who are frankly quite scared of doing any hands-on thing with their own website for them it's money well spent for somebody else to look after the whole thing but that is a service that you can provide you don't because yes. yeah. yeah. when, when you say hand it over then people can update that there are some people listening to this thinking i don't <laughs> that's the bit i don't want no no exactly and if they do then we you know we have a daily fee and we put an agreement in place and then somebody will say this these are the changes i'd like to make and we you know we make those changes usually within 24 hours and does your work come via referrals David, are you? Yeah, it's all referrals. Strangely enough, we're a design and marketing company. We're typical. We don't really promote ourselves very well. Um, we don't manage our socials as well as we manage our clients. Um, but then I've never noticed that we really get any any of our work through social channels. It all comes from the old traditional word of mouth, which is quite reassuring. Yeah, well, it speaks volumes for uh, for the work that you produce. That that's that's what people want. I guess um, it's also quite nice because Mark is a bit of a wannabe rock and roll guy. I mean, he has had his moments. He'll tell you about a moment with uh, Lemmy in LA if you get him drunk at some point. And oh, Rainbow, yeah, oh, Rainbow, Rainbow, probably your part of the world, aren't they? The old uh, <laughs> Birmingham. But I think there's something to be said. And now that I've noticed your, you've got Pink Floyd on your site, I'm now obviously thinking that I want the same designer as Nine Inch Nails and Pink Floyd. So that's got to be, that's got to be a, a helpful draw. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was actually very nice working with David Gilmore. He was a very, very nice, very nice person. Very yeah. nice. They're well brought up boys. The, uh, the Pink Floyd lot from just down the road uh, in Cambridge from where I am. So can you give us some, um, an idea of, I sort of hinted at the uh, sort of entry costs for somebody. Can you give people a ballpark? I realize different projects are going to require different quotes and so on. Um, so without constraining you. Yeah, I, I would say a starting, I mean, obviously you, you, you've got the template solution, which there are some good templates, which are 
50 pounds, you install it on a server, you put all your content in and, you know, that can, that can be a thousand to 2000 pounds to set that up. Um, then you've got something, everything ranging to midway about the 5,000 pound mark. And then if it's very bespoke and you've got to develop and build a store, it goes, you know, above the 10,000 pound mark. Yeah. So it all depends really. It is such a strange industry, website builders. I used to do a bit of work for um, as a freelance for Olga V and WPP and these big, uh, big agencies. And we would be on the periphery doing some video work for clients that would pay £100,000 for a website. And I would look at this website afterwards and I would think that is not a lot different from my cricket club's website, which we did ourselves. I mean, it's, it's incredible stretch range and a percentile of how much people pay for a website but yeah. the fact that you are talking about these extraordinarily beautiful looking high-end websites at that kind of figure i think is probably the industry becoming more realistic it's it's uh yeah ex- exactly and and those types of companies and those sorts of budgets you know it's all taken up with project management and meetings and you know as you say it's it's not you know the the world has got real, really, when it comes to, to budgets. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, I think they're they're losing clients. But I mean, I'm not specific. I'm, I just try not to libel any of these big agencies because they've got a lot of money still. But, um, yeah, they pay for large buildings in expensive parts of London and New York and, and L.A. and so on. And um, I think they probably do start to feel a slightly outdated mode. Maybe they'll adapt uh, to survive. But, yeah. Okay, well, look, that's great. If people want to get hold of you, I guess it's to go to creativecorporation.com. Yeah, exactly. And uh, and have a sort of a, 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 an obligation free discussion would be a, a good start to say. Um, I am I'm always up for having a conversation with anybody. Um, and actually, since developing Mark's website, I think I've spoke to five or six other authors, some that I think have been working with you guys, and said very, very good things about you both. Oh, that's nice. And uh, yeah, and I don't know. I've, in, I've enjoyed the conversations. I'll, I'll always help help somebody. But yeah. yeah, if somebody wants to give me a call, I'm more than happy to show them and talk them through the different options. Well, thank you, David. I really urge people to have a look at markjdawson.com to see how a brand can live on a website, and then go and have a look at creativecorporation.com because there's some stunning examples of. Uh, of a long way from the old days of just uh, festooning your front page with a million links to everything, which has seemed to be what everyone did about probably not that long ago, probably about five or six years ago. And now there's these beautiful frames, I guess you call them, don't you? This is, uh, they just tell a story, tell a narrative, and just a few few uh, moments of uh, a movement moving the mouse. Um, so yeah great brilliant so nice to talk to you David thank you so much from snowy England we're not used to the snow are we so it's all been a bit chaotic Uh, yeah and you it was very nice yeah excellent thank you very much David and uh, good luck with it thank you see ya yeah so I'm very jealous that he had David Gilmore sitting next to him um, designing his website I would have uh, fawned a lot on that occasion Um, but you know, it is about if it's about a shop window, obviously, there's a form and function argument, as we touched on in the interview, but the form has never been more important, I think, than it is is now. Yeah, this is, is crucial. You, there's no point in having a very beautiful website that doesn't do anything. Um, you for us, for, for authors, there's two functions, really, is it's, it's lead generation. So it's finding a way to harvest our readers email addresses. I hate that. That sounds terribly um cold but to you know to enable us to connect with our readers by way of a mailing list so that's that's the most important thing and then um it's telling people about our books and making it easy for them to find the links that they need to go to the stores that they want to go to to buy the books that they want to buy that that is the um the other main function of it and provided that um, those two functions are catered for then then you can start wrapping it up in 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 prettiness um or you know nice design um, atmospheric design which is that's the way we we went about it with with dave and um i i'm extremely pleased with the result yeah now if you've got a website and uh, you're interested in getting a professional critique of that and an opinion of it dave has actually offered to take up one person one person who's listening to the podcast 
uh, episode and give you a full feedback on your website. So basically a health check to make sure it's doing the right job and it's looking as good as it could be and a discussion about that. If you want to be in, in with a chance to be selected for that, if you drop us an email, go to selfpublishingformula.com forward slash web check, web check or one word, uh, drop your email in there. And uh, we will then pass that over to uh, to Dave. We'll select one of you to go through to have that chat. So it's a really good, uh, really good offer from Dave. Yeah, I mean, um, that, again, it's uh, something that would cost quite a lot if you went to ask him independently. So um, yeah, really good opportunity to to get some uh, um, very qualified opinions on on what your website looks like. Now, just a heads up, if you're in the United Kingdom and you are around in the London area, we are going to have a little drinky poos at the London Book Fair. Come and meet the amazing Mark Dawson and uh, you may even get a pin. We may hand out a few mm. pins to selected we individuals. Yeah, we will. We will. Um, so we'll announce the venue and the time. It's probably going to be on the Wednesday night. In fact, it is going to be on the Wednesday night. There's another drink on the Thursday night with our friends at uh, Alliance of Independent Authors, but we will do Wednesday night this year. So that is going to be the 10th. 10th. 11th. 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 Yeah, it's the 11th. Yeah. 11th of yeah. April. In, in Olympia, so it'll be very close to uh, to the Olympia Exhibition Centre. So even if you're not registered for London Book Fair, if you want to make it up in the evening, check into the SPF Community Facebook group. We'll announce the exact uh, location to be decided at the moment. Uh, come and have a drink on us. Excellent. Mark, thank you. Uh, survive the week. Uh, dodge the hazmat um, area and nerve agent in Salisbury. We're going to be talking about Twitter next week. I love Twitter. I love the fact that we have to talk about it every six weeks because they change everything and make it almost impossible for authors to decipher. But luckily, we have an expert uh, on hand to tell us exactly what authors should be doing with Twitter to make it work for you and try and use that platform to sell your books. So next week's episode is going to be a Twitter special and there's a good giveaway with that as well. So uh, tune in or whatever you do with podcasts. Turn on, drop out. Uh, for next week. Thank you very much for listening. Have a great week. We'll see you next Friday. You've been listening to the Self-Publishing Formula podcast. Visit us at selfpublishingformula.com for more information, show notes, and links on today's topics. You can also sign up for our free video series on using Facebook ads to grow your mailing list. If you've enjoyed the show, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes. We'll see you next time.